everybody, Dan Bailey here, and this is episode 9 of my Fujifilm X-Series Retrospective, where I'm looking back at my 10-year journey shooting with the Fujifilm X-Series cameras. If you haven't seen the rest of the series, you can find a link to episode number 1 in the description below. Before we get started, I just want to say a couple quick things. Thanks again to everybody who's tuned in and watched these episodes and left comments. It's been really fun to hear your own experiences with the Fujifilm cameras and, and read stories about your own X-Series life. These cameras have obviously impacted us in a big way in our creativity, and so I've really enjoyed hearing your part in this. Also, as some of you guys know, I'm not just a photographer, I'm a musician as well. I actually got my degree in recording engineering and music production, and last week I released a brand new song called Interstellar Love Song. It's a super fun rock and roll love song with lots of synthesizers and guitars, and I feel some of my best singing I've ever done. Uh, anyway, you can find that at this link right here. Or you can find me and stream my music on your favorite music app, like Spotify or Apple Music. And finally, I just want to let you guys know about my Photography on the Brain video lesson series. This is my exclusive course where we dive down deeply into the realms of creativity and photography and explore ideas on a much more cerebral level than we usually do on the YouTube channel here. And with 30 lessons in the course, my goal is to try to get you guys to become more confident, more creative photographers, to try new things, and I give you assignments that force you to try and figure out how to apply these techniques to your own image making. So if you'd like to check out my Photography on the Brain course, you can find that here at this link. Okay, let's get started. In this episode, we're going to talk about 2020. Pretty important year, a lot happened. Fujifilm released some new cameras. The year started off pretty well here in Alaska, with some nice cold weather and lots of snow. And it ended with, well, I'm not going to ruin the surprise for you. You'll just have to wait and see what happens. As I said, started off here in Anchorage with some beautiful snowy conditions, wonderful warm winter light, and lots of hoarfrost on all the trees. I shot these photos of my friend Bill while riding my fat bike on the trails in the first week in January. These were made with a 90mm lens and my X-T3. A lot of times I'll go biking with my 50mm f2 lens because it's just so tiny and I love the way it looks. I love the way it portrays subject matter. Here's some of the photos I shot with that during an early January ride. These are shot roughly a mile from my house, so pretty much anywhere you look in January this time of year in Anchorage, you're bound to get some really good views and some wonderful light. I had some great views of the moonrise right from my backyard. I shot these with the X-T3 and my 100-400 lens and the 1.4X teleconverter. I also shot a lot of aerials that winter. I went flying in my little Cessna over the Chugach Mountains. Winter is such a beautiful time to do that kind of thing because the sunset light on the mountains just east of Anchorage, is gorgeous during the late afternoon. And this winter I did something that I'd never done before. I actually shot some aerial video with my X-T3. In the last couple of episodes, I've talked about how capable the X-T3 is for filmmakers, and so I decided to try and do some of that myself. So as I was flying around some of these scenes, these gorgeous mountain scenes, I would just open the window and then capture short clips as I was flying by these peaks. So after a couple of flights, I had quite a bit of video footage, so I put together a, a short movie called Aerial Adventure, Winter Flying in Alaska, and I set that to original music. You can find the link to that movie here. I actually took a film scoring class when I was in college, and I really enjoy putting original music to film. I find it really inspiring to combine these two passions and just let the creativity flow from my guitar and my keyboards when I'm watching these, these clips of video on my monitor. And of course, anybody who's watched a movie knows how important music is and increasing the emotional impact and the visual drama when you're looking at this kind of footage. So I really enjoy this, and of course it gives me an excuse to play guitar at my desk and call it work. Well, after I made the movie, I continued to shoot a lot of aerials that winter, including this scene of Mount Gilbert, which I photograph quite often. It's one of the prominent 10,000 foot peaks in the Chugach Range. I love the way that Velvia Film Simulation looks with these mountain aerials with this type of scenery, but I've also enjoyed shooting other film simulations like classic chrome and also shooting the Acros black and white film simulations as well. And of course with the X-T3 you have those black and white warm cool adjustment settings. I think it's one of the coolest creative settings that Fujifilm has come up with in recent years and I really enjoy using this to just give different looks to my imagery. This particular flight was very memorable. Not only did I get some great images, uh, it was pretty exciting. At one point I was trying to line up this vantage point to grab this very specific peak here and I get hit by this huge gust of wind and it was a little bit frightening. Uh, it was unlike anything I'd ever experienced up there. Uh, I made it out of it safe. I'm still here. So uh, lesson learned, be mindful of the wind when you're flying up in the mountains. 
And I'd always known that, but as I said, I'd never experienced it to this degree. On February 2nd of 2020, I celebrated my 30 year anniversary of being a photographer. I bought my very first camera, a Nikon FM2, on February 2nd, 1990. And so this was a huge milestone for me that I'd spent three full decades as a photographer. It's been amazing for me to look back on those 30 years and see all of the amazing experiences that photography has brought me in my life. And 30 years later, I still love it as much as I did the first day. And a few days later, I got a brand new camera. Fujifilm had just announced the X100V. This was the fourth generation of the X100 series. And so they sent me one to try out. I had never really been an X100 guy. I, I'd played around with them a tiny bit. And for whatever reason, I never found myself enamored with them as much as I had with the X-T series cameras. But when I got this thing in my hand and I took it out and played with it, I absolutely fell in love with it. And it's been a really faithful companion to me since then. So with this update, Fujifilm gave the X100V the same sensor and processor as the X-T3 and X-Pro3. It had a brand new updated 23 millimeter F2 lens. It was even sharper than before. And unlike all the other X100s, it actually has a flip up screen. And so for someone who shoots a lot of different vantage points, I found this to be an awesome little feature. In addition, the X100V had a touch screen and it had those swipe gestures that act as function controls. So with its function buttons, the swipe gestures, and the assignable Q button, which could be either a function button or a Q button, the X100V has 10 assignable function controls. And it had a faster autofocus system with 425 AF points, the little focus joystick, and it shot in 4K, and it shoots continuous mode at 11 frames a second. So this little guy is a real powerhouse. It was a major upgrade to the X100 line. Oh yeah, and it's weather sealed. So as I said, I fell in love with this little thing and I took it on my bike rides all the time. And I would just pop it in my frame bag and then just go ride my fat bike for hours in the snow in the cold weather, just capturing whatever scenes came upon me at, at any given moment. I even took it up in the airplane and shot some aerials with it. So I'm not sure exactly what it was that made me fall in love with this guy so much where in the past the X100 really didn't appeal to me that much. It did have some new creative features. It had the new clarity setting that the X-Pro3 had. It had the classic neg film simulation. And between that and the, the flip screen and the joystick, I don't know, I just really enjoy this thing. It's just such a fun little camera. And maybe because it reminds me of my first X-10. You know, that was my first Fuji that I had used almost 10 years ago. At the end of February, pro endurance cyclist Rebecca Rush came back to Alaska to do the ITI once again. And this time she brought her husband Greg to accompany her, you know, like a week long date ride in the freezing cold. And she brought her producer and traveling companion extraordinaire, Allison Davis again. And as we had the year before, Allison and I teamed up and we shot the start and then we leapfrogged to some of the checkpoints by, by bush plane. Uh, and then we were able to capture the finish as well when Rebecca and Greg showed up at the end of the race. And just like the year before, I shot almost entirely with the X-T3 often using the grip and using a variety of lenses like the 23 millimeter 1.4, the 35 F2, the 50 to 140, sometimes the 50 millimeter F2. And there were a couple times where I even shot video with this little guy. And the end result was a 16 minute short film called Distant Dharma, Teachings from the Iditarod Trail. I got the lead cinematographer credit. And as of right now, Distant Dharma has been included in something like 13 film festivals around the world. Fujifilm had actually announced a brand new camera right before the Iditarod thing, but I wasn't able to get one in time to do that assignment with it. And this new camera was the X-T4, the latest flagship in the X-Series line. And it had the one feature that a lot of people were hoping that it would have, which was an upgraded in-body stabilization system. It improved on the X-T3's already impressive performance specs, and it took over as the only stabilized sensor in the Fuji line now that the X-H1 had been discontinued. Using a series of small magnets instead of springs, the X-T4 stabilization system allowed for a smaller footprint inside the body, and it also improved the accuracy and performance of the system in a huge way over what the X-H1 was capable of. In addition, the X-T4 offered something that many people had considered the weak point of mirrorless cameras, especially to those people who shot video or who liked to shoot in extreme cold conditions, and that was battery life. And they got around this with a bigger battery. As X-H1 users had noticed, uh, stabilization really eats battery power, as does shooting video. So the X-T4's brand new battery, it's a little bit bigger, but it certainly offers more life. About 30% more frames when you're shooting stills, and about double the time when you're shooting video. Add in the X-T4's vertical battery grip, and you get over 1,700 shots shooting stills, 
and a huge amount of time shooting videos. Under the hood, the X-T3 and X-T4 actually look very similar. They're almost identical in specs. They both have the same fourth generation X-Trans sensor and the same image processor, so image and video quality essentially remain the same between the two cameras. But with its more powerful battery, the X-T4 can fire at 15 frames a second with a mechanical shutter without the grip, where the X-T3 can fire at 11 frames a second mechanical shutter. The X-T4 was also introduced with a faster autofocus system, but since then the X-T3's firmware was actually upgraded to match. So those two cameras, as I said, have the same image quality and the same autofocus performance. However, the X-T4 included a number of the new creative settings that were first introduced a few months earlier on the X-Pro3. And that included the new clarity setting, monochromatic color, color chrome effects blue, and highlight and shadow tone adjustments that allow for half stop increments. And the X-T4 had a brand new film simulation called Eterna Bleach Bypass. And this was designed to mimic the motion picture processing technique, which skipped the bleaching step and left a picture that had a high dynamic range with lots of contrast, but very low saturation. I actually did a whole YouTube video about Eterna Bleach Bypass. You can find that here at this link. In terms of basic body style, the X-T4 had this roughly the same ergonomics and functionality as the X-T3 with a couple of main changes. The X-T4 is a little bit bigger than the X-T3 and has a slightly larger grip. And the other main change was the very angle LCD screen, which some people call the flippy screen. Instead of flipping up or down like the screen on the X-T3, with the X-T4 the screen actually flips out to the left and once it's out there you can tilt it up or down or you can spin it 180 and then close it again. And so this actually hides the screen and offers more protection, say you're scrambling around or if you tend to bang it a lot, uh, or you can use it for distraction-free shooting so you're not always tempted to chimp and look at the photos every time you take it. You can just close it like you can on the X-Pro3 and just go shoot and don't worry about looking at every image on the screen. As you can imagine, not everyone loved the X-T4's flippy screen. In fact, some people hated it. I'm not a huge fan of it when shooting stills. It's a little bit awkward, but it actually comes in handy a lot when you're shooting video, especially when you're shooting selfie video. That's actually how I shoot my YouTube videos now. I put my X-T4 on the tripod with the battery grip and I flip the screen out so I can look at myself. There I am right there in the screen. And I use the Fuji app on my phone as a wireless cable release to control the shutter and turn it on or off. So compared to the slightly awkward Battery Hog X-H1, the X-T4 offered the classic X-Series styling and camera design with a fully stabilized sensor, a bigger, more powerful battery, and features that were much more conducive to filmmaking. In fact, for as good as the X-T3 is as a film camera, the X-T4 only improved on that in a big way. They have a lot of new features, and so the X-T4 is now Fuji's best, most powerful still and video camera to date. And I'm not showing it in the video right now because I didn't actually get one in 2020. Uh, we'll see that next time, uh, and also because I'm shooting the video with my X-T4 right now. But you'll see a lot more about the X-T4 in episode 10. So yeah, I really would have liked to have the X-T4 when I was shooting Rebecca's second ITI adventure. Just didn't work out that way. Anyway, after Rebecca and Greg finished the ITI, we flew back to Anchorage, and I quickly packed up my own stuff and my own bike, and then my wife and I flew down with our friend Oscar to Oklahoma to do a 100-mile gravel race with our friend Nick, who lived down there. Actually, I didn't sign up for the race. Uh, I just went down for some sunshine and warm weather riding. But those three signed up for the race, and I went along for the fun. Funny thing, though, in the weeks leading up, we kept hearing about this coronavirus thing that was kind of out there. And of course, Allison and I were joking about it out on the ITI course. I mean, we're out there in the middle of nowhere in Bush, Alaska, like away from everybody. And so, of course, it felt like we could joke about it with no ramifications. But as we were thinking about Oklahoma, you know, it started to become more of a thing. And uh, at the time, there were very few cases in Oklahoma. So we felt safe to fly down. And of course, the president had even said that it was going to be over in two weeks. So it's not like we had anything to worry about, right? Well, on March 11, 2020, we flew down to Oklahoma with our bikes, and that was the day that COVID-19 was declared a worldwide pandemic. And we all kind of freaked out, but we went and did the race anyway, and it was the last big race and last big event for the whole year. And then we hung around Oklahoma and watched the world shut down. We read the news of the stock market crashing, uh, the schools being closed, everything shutting down. And a week later, on March 17th, we flew back to Alaska, totally freaked out, and we quarantined for two weeks, and that turned into the rest of the year. And as I was thinking about it at the time, 
the tomorrow that we were all expecting never came. I actually wrote a song about this later, but you'll have to wait till next episode to hear about that one. Well, anyway, we're home in Alaska and there's nothing to do, nowhere to go, so I figured I'd best thing to do is be shooting more YouTube videos. So the first thing I shot was a video called Tips for Staying Creative and Shooting Close to Home, which you can find right here. And of course, all my in-person events were canceled for the year, so I started doing Zoom workshops. And I did quite a number of those for the next few months until people finally got sick of Zoom, I think. But the YouTube thing seemed to be going pretty well. I started making a video a week and I kept that up throughout the whole summer. And in May of that year, I hit 1,000 subscribers. So that was a big milestone. I also wrote and recorded a song called Dr. Fauci Say. And I even shot a music video for the song. This was my first music video I'd ever made. And I made it with the X-T3. I mean, come on, I'm a child of the 80s. I grew up in the golden age of MTV. What else was I going to do? So it actually went pretty well. And I'm really proud of how it turned out. You can find my Dr. Fauci Say video here. In May and June, I did a lot of hiking took along the X-T3 with me, also the X-100V. Again, had a great time with this thing, just kept falling more in love with it. Here are some photos I shot with it during one hike where I used a flip up screen to shoot some close-ups from ground level. The X-100V actually has incredible close-up capabilities. It was a weird summer for sure. You know, 2019, we'd had the wildfires with all the smoke in Anchorage. 2020, we had the pandemic. Yeah, woohoo. Man, two great years in a row. At one point, I flew out to the glacier and did a little mini virtual photo workshop video that you can find right here. That was a lot of fun to do. And of course, there was no mountain biking that summer, so I signed up for a couple of different style events. On Memorial Day, I did a self-motivated virtual event that Rebecca had Russia come up with, uh, a climbing challenge, and I ended up climbing 16,000 feet on my bike that day. And at the end of June, I did what is without a doubt the hardest, longest, most challenging mountain bike race I've ever done, it was a little homegrown event called the Kenai 250, and I ended up doing 254 miles, climbing 21,000 feet, and finished in 46 and a half hours. In the middle of a stupid pandemic, what else are you going to do besides spend two full days riding your mountain bike in the remote wilderness? In July 2020, I took up another creative challenge to occupy myself during the pandemic, since I couldn't hang out with my friends or anything. I started doing some woodworking. When I was recovering from the Kenai 250, I built three compost bins, out of scrap wood that I found under my deck. And then I built a bench out of two by fours. And after that, I built two workbench tables for my deck. It was really interesting because most of the things I do in terms of creativity, like photography and music, are sort of intangible things because I don't make a lot of prints. And they're also kind of, for lack of a better word, free. These kinds of things aren't really exacting practices. You know, with music, I just play what I feel, you know, play whatever comes to mind. With photography, I just run around until I find something that I like and you know, break some creative rules to make a cool picture. Well, you can't really do that when you're building something. So embracing the concept of exact techniques and instructions uh, was a different exercise for me and, and my own mind. So I really enjoyed the process uh, of problem solving in different ways that I had ever done with photography and music and other creative things like that. In August, I did another short film that was similar to my aerial adventure movie. And for that one, I documented a hike that I did out by one of the glaciers and then set that to original music. And you can find that one right here. And then summer turned into fall and we continued to stay away from everybody we knew and try to make the best of it. And September was occupied almost entirely by more woodworking. With my successes with the compost bins and the bench and the tables, I decided to try building a shed. I figured at the very least I could get a floor built and then cover it up for winter and continue it next spring. But things went far better than expected. And I spent every single nice day in September working outside and building this thing. And it actually all came together. And by the middle of October, it was finished. And here it is. Again, I immensely enjoyed the process of making tons of mistakes and then trying to figure out how to fix all those mistakes. And as I mentioned, it went entirely better than expected. And I'm so proud of how this thing came out. It was, it's the first structure that I've ever built. And it's likely to outlast me. By early November, the snowfall came and it wasn't just snow, it was great snow. We had a bunch of it, and so fat bike season began early in 2020. Also in November, Fujifilm introduced its third new camera for the year, the little tiny XS10. Essentially, this was like a little miniature X-T4. It had a stabilized sensor. It had all those internal creative features that the X-Series cameras have. It had the same low light performance, 4K video, fast autofocus, you know, beautiful picture quality, but it had a very different design than we'd seen before. And I think that Fuji's mindset was to try to continue to capture 
more of those DSLR shooters by offering them something that was a little more familiar to them and then drawing them into the X-Series that way. And it had some great video features as well, uh, the kind that it would appeal to someone who's a YouTuber or a vlogger. And of course the strategy for Fujifilm was to ease people into the door with something that seems accessible to them and then introduce them to those wonderful colors and all the other qualities that makes the X-Series so appealing to the rest of us. And being the third X-Series camera with a stabilized sensor, this was the first time that Fujifilm had offered that feature on one of the less expensive models. In December 2020, I did a couple Zoom workshops, one for a Delaware camera in Buffalo, New York, and a Fujifilm X-Raw Studio lesson I did for B&H Photo. And I wrote and recorded an original Christmas song called A Very Cozy Christmas. Made a brand new music video with my X-T3 again. And of course, the best part about all this is that I shared the song on Twitter and Fender Guitars actually tweeted back and said, great job, Dan. So that is the biggest accolade I've ever gotten in my whole life. You know, the company that made the Stratocaster, you know, the instruments that the legends like Jimi Hendrix used and Eric Clapton, Fender Guitars liked my song, yes! And that was how the year ended. 2020 was indeed a really weird, interesting year. One that we're never gonna forget or one that maybe we hope we all forget. And as much as I missed hanging out with my friends that year, and doing the things that I usually do, like traveling, doing workshops and events, doing mountain bike racing. Uh, I tried my best to embrace the solitude that was forced upon me and doing things that I love to do, whether it's playing music or taking pictures or eating really tasty grilled cheese sandwiches on sourdough or having FaceTime chats with my dad where we're both sitting on our front porches in the sunshine drinking beer. And although my business was certainly affected by the pandemic, I never got to the point where it was too stressful or desperate for me. And that's because you guys, my readers and my YouTube viewers and my subscribers all came through in a big way. You continue to watch my YouTube videos and my photography and the brain lessons. You continue to read my blog and buy my eBooks. And so for that, I have to thank you and extend my greatest gratitude that I can even express. And I want you to know that I did my best to pass that support along as much as I could throughout the year because, hey, we're all in this together, right? So that's a wrap for episode nine. We've got one more episode to go and maybe one recap after that. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Let me know how you handled 2020 and what you did to keep your sanity intact. And of course, if you are a Fuji shooter, you wanna check out my best-selling ebook, X-Series Unlimited. This is a 400-page guidebook that'll show you everything you need to know in order to have the most fun and get the best results from your Fuji camera. You can find me on Patreon and social media at Dan Bailey Photo, and you can find my music channel on Instagram at Dan Bailey Music, uh, and you can visit my blog and website as well. So thanks again, have fun with your Fujis out there, and we'll see you next time.